Today on The Real. It's a new year and a new The Real. Yes. And now that we're finally back, we're helping you keep all those New Year's resolutions. How easy is that, right? Plus, the surprise of a lifetime for a 14-year-old author. Who words can't even describe how I feel. On an all-new The Real. We have the lovely and talented Candace Kane. Hey, Candace. Welcome. Thank you. It's so nice to have you. Oh my God, it's so your your audience is amazing. Oh, yeah. 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 Candace, so good to be here. We are so excited to have you. Okay. And thank you for coming. Now you were just on Caitlyn Jenner's reality show. I am Kate. You seem to have developed. Yes. Look at that beautiful photo. Um, your, your relationship's really close. Yeah, you know, um, she's just started her transition. Mm -hmm. And so I remember going through that like 20 years ago. Wow. So I remember being You don't look alone. that old, by the way. <laughs> you, really, you look, you look good. good. You look amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, I, I remember being alone. There wasn't even a word trans back then. Oh, yeah. Um, and so you just kind of went through it by yourself. And so when I saw that she was going through that and we met, you know, it's always, you know, being, doing your transition is always kind of a lonely thing because it's a lot of stuff that you have to, a lot of soul searching you have to do yeah. mm -hmm. in your heart and in your head. And, um, but there's also that point where you want a girlfriend to talk to that's mm -hmm. walk the walk and talk the talk. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and we become friends. That's how we, you know, we hit it off. Wow. That is so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Really cool. So much props to you because you were the first transgender, transgender actress to ever be cast as a, in a recurring role on a network primetime show. How wow. awesome is that? Yeah. Do you feel like today it's easier for transgender actors? I mean, it is. When I, when I first started, when I got on Dirty Sexy, I was pretty much the only one. Yeah. And so... Um, I always say, like, it was, I always felt like there was a gale storm against my, my chest. You know, you were climbing a hill. But uh. now, for the first time, I feel like there's a breeze on my back, you know? Oh. There's, there's, there's auditions. There's people like Laverne Cox on yes. Orange New Black, yes. you know, She's getting amazing. all of these amazing things. Uh, Transparent, which is winning all of these awards. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's gotten a lot better. And it's going to get even better. I mean, I'd like to see parts being played by trans women that are real juicy parts that could be, yeah. you know, award-winning parts. So, right. you know, it's just going to get to that eventually. Well, I think it things will. like that happen because of trailblazers like you. Absolutely. So, yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. That's so cool. Are you ready to have some fun with some girl chat? Yes! 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 Okay. Have you guys noticed that millennials are selfie-obsessed? Well, there's a recent study that says they spend 54 hours a year taking selfies. I think that's insane. Oh, All right. Yeah. Now, A, Miss huh? Adrian, I know you love a selfie. <laughs> she spent more than 54 hours. <laughs> Most of the time, I, I can't even see. I feel her. like if you spent that much time and you do so many selfies. Look at that. Whatever. You should have it down at this point. Like, it should not take that long. Well, no, well but do you, you know, think, it, the, the it, question is, you guys, is do you think selfies yeah. have gotten out of control? Yes. I no. would have to agree. No, it has, but for a good reason. Every picture that is a selfie is so much better than the pictures out there that people take of you. Exactly, because you, you know your angle. It's true. Dude, yeah. let me tell you what my trick is. Okay, now, it's, it's better. better. It's better, it's better because, because you, you I wish my hurt. driver's license picture was a selfie. I wish my Costco card was a selfie. 
I seriously, Very helpful. my wedding pictures were a selfie. They would be the best pictures. <laughs> Look, because you can find your angle. You two go overboard with your selfies. No oh, way. Yeah. Yes, you do. How yes, dare you, you talk do. to us I, like that? Your Instagram is 80% is, is you. You'll never put my picture up. I'm always well, putting your no, picture I up. Let me tell you, go when ahead, I was Adrian. in Paris, I had no one with Look me, that. so I had no choice but to... A lot of those are in Paris, you guys. There oh, I like no that one on the... there with me. Was I, gonna, I couldn't speak French yet. I was just, you know... Those well, are good I, ones, I'm in Paris. I can Eiffel Tower. She does. Me. I can't, I can't say, gorgeous. though, Adrian, what I do love about Adrian's selfies mm -hmm. are that they are beautiful. Thank you. And, yes. honestly, you do have a balance. She does have a balance to her Instagram. Because, personally, I unfollow people who do too many selfies because, to me, it comes off... I'm just going to say it. Slightly narcissistic. It's like, do you have other friends? Do you, what, what else do you do with your life? You're I always take taking pictures too. So that's the reason why. I, I mean, I, I love your your Instagram page because you see your sister, mm -hmm. you see your mom, you see your dad, you see your nieces. nieces. So I, I I can appreciate no. I can appreciate that. The Bible says, love thine self. True. Self True. Love thyself, but as as you are. A lot of the times, you guys. Uh -oh. No, I'm, we about I, to I'm have just a gonna Christian be real. Showdown. No, <laughs> I'm just gonna be real. A lot of the times, when people do selfies, they put tons and tons of filters yes. on them. Face so tune it, is a girl's. Face tune is, is a, girl's a girl's best, best friend. friend. However, that's, that's fine. But at the same time, psychologists have actually connected too many selfies with narcissism, and this is a big one, you guys low self-esteem. Really? Yes, because they are always looking at themselves and finding something that's wrong with them. So they'll filter this, they'll filter that, they'll fix know. their nose, they'll fix their way. I don't think no, Beyonce don't was having low <laughs> self-esteem when she says, feeling myself, feeling myself. <laughs> Hey, that's I mean, like really, though. That's, that's, that's psychology, and it's because, Jeannie, may not, may, it may not be you, but some people do a lot of selfies because they fish for compliments, because they don't feel good about themselves. Well, Candice, do you like selfies or what? What's your take on this? <laughs> well, I think a good selfie is never a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, it's the one chance. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Candace, continue speaking. I was hot and I found a fan. Oh. But do you have um, a balance to it? I do, but you okay. know, I also, as you all know, when you're in the public eye, people want to see selfies. They want to see what you're doing, what you're up to, and they want to kind of follow you, you know? I think that selfies can actually make you feel better, even if you, yeah. you yes. know, if, as long as, you know, as long as you're not falling off a cliff backwards, you know. That is taking the good, selfie. See, yeah, and that's thing. the thing. Now, I understand it, but we have some issues because there are some people that are risking taking these uh, so-called selfies and in dangerous places with dangerous things, you know. Okay. Um, and they're actually killing yeah. themselves. Yeah, they're killing themselves. <laughs> okay. Over, you know. Let's okay, not well, let get crazy. Ask, yeah. I mean, and it's not just millennials that are kind of like going off of the selfie trend. <laughs> yeah, there are people that are That's going crazy insane. out there. Who would do that? But think about this, you guys. Parents are actually getting in on the selfie trend, too. So there was this college student, Emily Musson, who got this huge surprise when her parents decided to mock her selfies by recreating them. Can you imagine the horror? That is so it. funny. Check these out, you guys. Look at that. <laughs> um, I think I love her parents. Wait. Her parents are what, amazing. Seriously, imagine if your parents went through oh, all geez. of her personal photos. That. I love that. I mean, That's when you funny. think about it, when it's your parents really recreate them, you realize kind of how silly you look in these pictures, right? Well, sometimes parents need to teach their kids a lesson, you know? And I think we needed to teach some people a lesson. What, what, who, who? Because we, re oh. we oh, recreated yes, we some selfies. We did. We did? Oh, oh God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I do my Bessos face. I just, you know, Bessos from the set of the reel. I have, wait, by the way, can we give it up for that selfie Lonnie just took? Because that is so long. I am into it. You look like, that was so hard to do. I'm like, <laughs> no, I love it. Like, how could she do that, what? okay? What I most love people it. need to realize, though, for that look, one. Look, like, look at that one. Oh, <laughs> did I do okay, Jeannie? Shut up! <laughs> Teach 
teach me how to be comfortable with doing selfies because I just feel so like, <laughs> like awkward. You know, you're just like. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> you need to pop out your cheeks more in that one. Okay, <laughs> but that's okay. No, you got it good. Oh okay. my God, I'm so proud of you. The I feel like the selfie me. also is making sure you're not only, being photobombed. Only you were photobombed in your head. with food in your mouth and make it look good. Exactly. exactly. That's GD Mai for you, okay? No, but you have to appreciate, you guys. The selfie artist is not something that's easy to, to become. A selfie one picture that is takes true. like 500 that edits or, sure. or angles in order to get that one shot. It's an art, you guys. It, it really deserves more. You guys do it very well. Thank I you. Will say it, so. It's so it's weird because beautiful. I feel like a lot of people, do you guys look at your Instagrams and figure out like what your audience likes? I know yeah. that sounds really weird, but like yeah. what gets you the most follows? Yes. Oh. And I know what gets me the most, I promise it you guys, is my selfies, but I have to give it up to my makeup artist here at The Real, Eva Kim, because like literally oh. it's usually because of makeup. You know, yeah. like you get a big following from good makeup. Right? Yeah, no, but, but what lipstick color did you wear? Mm -hmm. I think when that light is just right, it's not worth the fight. I think it's body, oh, always body, body. Selfie light. it up, oh, selfie always. it up. All right, next up, you guys. Body, body, body. What does that mean? What's that? Well, I always get like more followers when you're like, Candace, you're showing you, a little bit of that. You do the arch really well, huh? <laughs> like, you know when you arch to make your butt look a lot bigger? Yeah. Adrian taught me that, because my yeah. butt is as flat but as But how do you capture, <laughs> how do you capture all of that? Like, my arm isn't that long. That's what the my selfie arm. stick is for. That's the selfie stick. Wait, my arm just catches right here. That's about please, it. Please, do either of you own a selfie stick. I no. did. I got one last season on the reel. <laughs> you did. Why yeah. wouldn't you? You own one too, much? We, we got them. They gave them last to season us. Oh, see, on the I reel. Gave, I gave mine to my to my um, niece. Yeah, I own three. One for the car, yeah. Who's one for the house, okay. and one for work. No, I had one here, and then I lost the cord. So again, I'm stuck with the short arm. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, you know. Well, <laughs> next up, you guys, is there a lack of honesty in the bedroom? Mm. So we're keeping it pretty real about selfies, but do you think people keep it real in the bedroom mm -hmm. all the time? No. Eh. Why do you say that? A recent study out of Indiana University said that 85% of men thought their last partner had an orgasm, and only 64% of the women say they actually had one. <laughs> Lonnie. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever been dishonest about your orgasms? It depends on how much money he made. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, guys, let's be honest. Like, this is the real, let's keep it real about this. Faking the big O. Yeah. You know what? I think men, okay. <laughs> keep it real, Lonnie. I think Lonnie. men, because they think that they have satisfied a woman. That's the problem. And so they satisfy, so they think they satisfied you, so they be like, hey, I, I got mine. You I know, put you it like, down. <laughs> you know, so I think a lot of times they don't really think about the woman. But oh, with me, so they're thinking about right. like, yeah. oh, like I they, got this. They're satisfied, you know what I mean? Yeah. They are, are satisfied. satisfied. So now you should be satisfied because they're satisfied. That's what I think. <laughs> A lot of times you just, you have a long day, you're like, you just want to pretend so you can go to bed, <laughs> you know what I mean? I because heard they'll that. keep trying and trying you and trying. You do it too? You no, know? yes. <gasps> Wait uh, a second, hold on. Wait, Tamara, you're <laughs> sipping that tea like, I don't know what. <laughs> you're not. Well, what's going on over Tamara, there? Tamara, why, are you, why are you blushing? Is it because you've done it? Who at this table ha hasn't? That's Keep what I'm, I'm, well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell right, you that I really right. don't. I'm just saying. I'm gonna tell you why. Oh, you I really don't. don't. I don't. Hold on, I think we could be great actresses. Actually, no, I really you've don't. Never, ever, 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 ever. I have ever. like way long ago, but okay. I don't anymore because as a grown woman, I realize this. You ready? Okay. Faking the funk is not gonna get me satisfied, okay? Because if I keep faking it, you're gonna keep doing that same thing. That's not working for me. Because you're thinking you're killing it, and I'm thinking snooze fast. <laughs> so well, you, if but I... you're single though. It's different, I think, when you in a like a committed. Yeah, but even then, I have no problem being monogamous. Like, babe, it's just either same it's just person, not gonna happen all every tonight. day. <laughs> Yeah. All and, day relationship. Yeah, I don't really have that problem. Forever sometimes, and oh, ever. well, I'm really, uh, hey, Adrian, Adrian. Sometimes <laughs> it, I, it usually works every time. If you're just joining us, Tamar's out for the day. Yes. We're so bummed, but we've got Candace Kane sitting right here with us. Hey. Okay, that's girl chat. Yes. Ladies, it seems like women can never win, okay? So we're supposed to wear makeup, we want to look alive, it helps us kind of like, you know, look a little bit more freshened up, but we're not supposed to wear too much. Yeah. And then there's some women who wear makeup 
and then they feel like they're getting backlash. So get this, they're calling it makeup shaming. So women are posting half of their made up faces with the hashtag, the power of makeup, to Ooh. show the power of makeup shaming. So Candace, I wanna know from you, yeah. do you judge women who wear too much makeup? No, makeup is my friend, not my enemy. <laughs> but okay. you know what, I, I, okay. yes. I think that when people sh like get, get on uh, women for wearing too much makeup, it's because they're not doing it right. Mm. Yeah. It's not the amount of makeup you wear, it's how you're applying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah, I also think, I'm sorry to say this, there are people that are just haters that see somebody totally glammed up or that they look amazing and they're like, you know she's really not that pretty. She has 10 pounds of makeup on. Anyone would be that pretty if they wore that much makeup. You're a hater, have a seat like Tamar would say. Yeah. Like, no, and I think in our yeah. position, you ever hear like somebody would be like, well it's daytime television, Lonnie, why do you have glitter on your eyes? Why, because I feel like it and it looks fly. Well you know, this is my thing. Whatever makes you feel good, what you do say. what you want to do, exactly. okay? I agree 100% because y'all know in my everyday Day life, I really don't wear a yeah. lot of makeup. Yeah, I, don't. I don't like wearing, you know, a lot of makeup. Yeah. My husband loves that I don't wear a lot of makeup, and I'm like, you know what? If you love to wear makeup, wear makeup. Yeah. Do you? Do yeah. you think that wearing a lot of makeup says that you're insecure? What if you just really no, like it just makeup? Means you like makeup. Well, some of us need to wear makeup. That okay. Is. <laughs> preach, some Bonnie, do. Preach. I don't want to go around looking like Frankenstein all the time. I mean, yeah. so yeah. I'm gonna yeah. put like some on. Well, but I, I did. Oh, yes, I, I do. Do you see these dark years? Rings. To be able to hey. wear makeup. Yes. So I'm embracing the you makeup. You earned it. Yeah. I earned that makeup. It is fun. Card. And the well. power, remember that the power of makeup, it's meant to enhance, it's meant to let you play dress up, it's meant to let you be imaginative with the beautiful features you already have. Yeah. So celebrate it. Yeah. Through makeup. You know what? If you really want to see the power of makeup, check out this makeup trend straight out of Japan. The newest thing is called. Hungover makeup. What? Yes. Ladies are putting blush under their eyes and getting their hair wet to make themselves look like they had a rough night. <laughs> or, I think it's interesting because I see that fashion trends and makeup trends always come out of real life experiences. Like, the smoky eye did not just come to fruition. The smoky oh, how eye. How did it happen? The smoky eye actually came from makeup, just uh, a problem that. that Smudge? It's what makeup artists have with bleeding, makeup bleeding, when things yes. just feather out. Uh -huh. So they actually started to just work with it and created what's now the smoky eye. Look at the ombre. Girls letting their roots grow out. You know, my roots are growing just, out. They, that's, that's what I'm saying. from your roots growing out and it turned into a fashion I didn't trend. I know that. So maybe yeah. these Japanese girls are into something. Well, this isn't a trend. I've been doing this for years. I mean, this is, yeah. yeah, I do it all the time. She's got a real hungover look. We all know that making New Year's resolutions is the easy part, but keeping them is an entirely different issue. We're just days into the new year, and I can see through that TV, y'all are already falling off. I know I have, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, we have decided to help everybody out with some tips on how to stay on track. Let's hear it for Resolution Solutions. Oh! <laughs> going to focus on the top three resolutions most people make. Uh, Jeannie, count us off. You got it, Candace. The resolution that ranks number three. <laughs> is to stop smoking. Wow. Yeah. I agree with that. So gross. Check this out. According to the Center for Disease Control, 70% of Americans who smoke wish they could quit. Isn't that crazy? And the problem is, how? So here's a solution to kick some cigarette butts. Simply adding cayenne pepper to your drinking water will desensitize the respiratory system to tobacco to stop the craving for cigarettes. How easy is that, right? <laughs> oh, and another good tip is to eat your oats. Ooh. Because oats contain chemicals that are known to reduce stress. And this is great because most smokers get the urge to smoke in stressful situations. Mm -hmm. So along with oats, try to find other ways to relieve stress, such as exercising, or if you're lazy like me sometimes, read a good book. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeannie. Who knew? No. Now this next resolution is something most people struggle with all year long. Take it away, Adrian. All right, now this resolution is right up my alley because as much as I like expensive things, I also like to save my money. Oh, yes. Oh. 100%. So the resolution that ranks number two on our list is... <laughs> to save money. Mm. Now, I know that sounds easier 
said than done, but we have a solution to this resolution. The first tip involves how to avoid maxing out your credit cards. Start the habit of leaving your credit cards at home and try to use cash. So you see, you just put these away, say no thanks, no thanks, no thanks. And that way, you only spend what you have and you're less likely to get into debt. Oh, so this is great for helping you stick to your budget, you know? My next tip is for those shopping addicts. Any of those in the audience, shopping addicts? <laughs> Nowadays, you can purchase a whole wardrobe with just the click of a button, but the convenience of online shopping can also lead to big spending, right? right. So here's a tip. Add your items to your online shopping cart, and then you wait 24 hours before purchasing them. This is genius. Yes. Most of the time, if you wait, the company will send you coupons towards the items in your cart. And also, after waiting, you may change your mind about the purchase. You might be like, eh, on second thought, that was an impulsive buy. Don't need it. <laughs> in the end, either way, you save money. Good to know it. Uh-huh. Thanks, Adrian. That makes so much sense. Yes, it does. Um, now, the next is the mother of all resolutions. Yes. Tamara, yes. tell them what I'm talking about. Okay, this resolution is the number one resolution every single year, and that <laughs> is to lose weight. So, I've got a few solutions for you. We all know working out in the morning is great because it jump starts your day and gives you energy. But let's face it, the hard part is actually getting up Ugh. and putting on your workout gear, am I right? Hey, right. Yes, Lord. All right, so here's a way to make you accountable and save you time. Just sleep in your workout clothes! <laughs> <laughs> when you wake up, you're already dressed. You got some and socks all on. You have, I got the socks on, y'all. Got the socks on. <laughs> Don't want to scare anybody. And all you have to do is throw on your sneakers, and then you are out the door. Easy, right? Okay. The next tip is portion control, which we've all heard of. But I've got a way that'll help you stick to it. Okay, this is the size of a dinner plate that most of us eat on. Because of its large size, we tend to pile more food on it, mm -hmm. causing us to eat more. But if you want to lose weight, eat dinner on a salad plate. Smart. That will help you control your portions, eat less, and lose weight. Also, find a salad plate that is the same color as your food because that would trick your mind into thinking there's more food on the plate since the plate and food will blend together. Aww. This, yes. This will cause you to feel full faster, and in the end, you'll lose weight. Just remember not to go back for seconds. Uh, I know. She plays the long-suffering wife and mother, and he plays her hard-drinking, drug-addicted son on Tyler Perry's The Haves and the Have Nots. Welcome, Renee Lawless and Aaron O'Connell. Yeah. <laughs> so, question, do you guys have any New Year's resolutions? A New Year's resolution? Yes. I'm gonna find me a man. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. All the crew needs to line up. There'll be a test afterwards. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Damn. What about you, Eric? Me, uh, I got Rosetta Stone five years ago, learned Spanish, and I still haven't done it. So, oh, wow. I'm gonna learn Spanish. Oh, you can oh, learn oh, yeah, I haven't started yet. Okay. <laughs> so, you so, got at least know the basics. Hi, my name is. Uh, uh, Aaron. <laughs> so, so, Aaron. Hola. Hola. Me Hello. llamo. Me llamo. Aaron. Aaron. That's it. See that? Oh, there you go. go. There's a start. That There's is a start. start. Real. Renee. You Hi, you I'm Renee. Mrs. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I Renee, love it. you played Mrs. Potts in uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yes, and I did. Aaron, you got your start at commercials. <laughs> commercials, yeah. But this is like, you guys, it's first. Look at that. Ooh, yes, Aaron, work so it. Uh, you look so beautiful at this time. And you're so 
cute as Mrs. Potts. It's He's so rough working with such a handsome <laughs> I know. Oh, sweet. <laughs> now, this is your first big hit TV show. Yes. How do you guys feel about the exposure that you get? You get recognized from people? Yes, um, to the point of it, it, was, it, looked, it threw you off your balance a little bit at first. Mm -hmm. And it's really a compliment when people walk up and they don't even say your name or your character name. They just start quoting dialogue. Like wow. with me, they'll be, oh, number nine. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and they, they start, and they'll, they'll do the entire monologue. They, they, they know wow. everything. And, and uh, yeah, so now people are actually starting to recognize me for my name. And that's nice. a little like, whoa, we've separated from Katherine Cryer now. Yeah. So, yeah. That is wow. so awesome. Initially, well, they look at you and they go, oh, I, you look familiar. I don't know where I know you're from. And then the next season, they think, oh, that looks like Wyatt. Okay. And then the third season, now, they're, now they know, know us by our name. So, so there's this transition, but you can exactly. you start to see, you make eye contact with people and they look at you a little longer, like, and then I just say hi, right. you know, like at the airport today, you know, but it's really nice. I mean, the, the show obviously wouldn't be, you know, having the success it would without all the people watching it. So I yeah. feel blessed. Good for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Now there's definitely a lot going on in the Cryer family mm -hmm. in the season finale. So what can we expect in the new season? Well, I think um, I think this theme of the new season is going to be payback. Ooh. Okay. You know, it's going to follow in the same vein as our finale and uh, kind of, you know, getting more what everybody deserves. <laughs> and nobody <laughs> is left out. Ooh. Okay. And you want to speak to I, I have to agree. It's all the bad people getting what they deserve. And I, and I know Wyatt's character gets, you know, really kind of pushes that whole, right. whole storyline um, coming up. So... Mm -hmm. Um, it's gonna I be think some of the Tyler good people get some so. stuff, too. Yeah. Oh, I don't oh, think it's maybe. just going to be, I don't think we're going to be discriminating between Ooh. good and bad people. Ooh. Oh, wow. All right. I, think, I think a lot of people are going <laughs> to well, get some doling out. It's the number one show on OWN, yes, so you guys are doing something. Okay. Now, on your show, The Haves and The Have Nots, there is a lot of deception and betrayal. Ooh. So, we decided to make a game of it. We have a row of chairs, and when the music starts, we will circle around them, and as soon as we hear the music stop, we'll race to have a seat. Anyone who doesn't get to a chair in time will be out and head to the have-nots elimination area. Uh. <laughs> yes, it's ruthless up in here. <laughs> Y'all ready? Let's play have a seat. Okay, now Renee and Aaron. You guys play the haves on the show. We thought it would be fun to dress you up as the have not for the game. Erin, mm -hmm. you are a butler, and Renee, you are a maid. Jeannie is going to join you as the chauffeur. The haves will be played by Lonnie, Candace, and Adrian. Are you guys ready to play? Sure. Okay, yes. on my cue, we will start. Ready, set. Hit it! Music, please. Hit it. Penalty box. Oh, oh. Aaron and Candace, come on over with the loser. You're now. Oh, I have not. Butler, please remove the Take chair. The it's the okay. real versus Renee. Music, please. kids on our show and our next guest is one you won't forget this is his story it's so inspiring take a look Kyle Dixon the third's childhood was a constant struggle I remember being caught stupid slow and retarded almost every single day by kids just for being in special ed I even had a teacher who told me that I would never make it in life 
but a journal given to him by his mother completely turned things around. The more he wrote, the more determined he became to make it in life. And at 14, he's doing just that. I wrote my first book, which has sold over 10,000 copies. And I started motivational speaking, which I talked to over 20,000 kids. And from this experience came his next big idea. Sneaker journals are shoes kids wear and write their goals for and then focus on achieving them before they outgrow them. Every day, we see commercials about fast food and toys. But how many times do you see people advertise their goals and dreams? It's time to make a change. I cannot wait to meet this young man. Come on out, Kyle. You ladies are really beautiful as well. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, Kyle. Yes, Welcome. and thank you so much for being here. You thank are you. such an inspiration. Thank you. Yes. Appreciate you it. You are. Oh, thank you. I love that smile. Thank you. <laughs> so this whole thing started because you were being bullied every day. Yes. Tell us, what, what did that feel like? Well, actually, when I was in fourth grade, kids would call me stupid and retarded almost every single day just for being a special ed. Mm -hmm. And I even had a teacher who told me on the last day of school that I would never go anywhere in life. But when I heard Mr. Les Brown say, never let someone's opinion of you become Absolutely. a reality, that's when things started to change. Absolutely. Like, that's when I noticed that as long as I believed in myself, anything can happen. That's you right. are correct. Absolutely. That's Thank right. you. So Kyle, you're 14, yes. you've already written a book, you've given motivational speeches to over 20,000 people. Wow. So what's next? Because I know there's something about a sneaker journal. Yes, I have a sneaker coming out called Sneaker Journals, and they're writable shoes kids wear so then they can focus on achieving their goals before they're outgrown. That I is so that awesome. Idea. That's so cute. Like, so Kyle, do you see this sneaker becoming like as popular as like, like, you know, Jordans or something? Well, one thing that I really want is I want my, one of my goals is to see everyone has a pair of sneaker journals on their feet so then they're reminded of what's important to them and that's their goals. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome. What a great idea. Well, Thank you. Dwayne Edwards, the guy who designed two pairs of Air Jordans heard your story. Thank you. And he is here. <laughs> Dwayne, come on up and meet Kyle. because he is seriously a big deal. Wait, His no. shoe designs have sold over a billion dollars worldwide. <laughs> two of his designs were worn during the Olympics and those athletes won two gold medals. And now Dwayne has something special he wants to share with you, Kyle. So Dwayne, take it away. Kyle, um, here's a box for you. Okay. Um, take a look at it and let me know what you think. Oh my God. <gasps> wow. Oh, Kyle, wow. show us what it is. Wow, wow. let's pull it out. Pull it out. Oh my God. Whoa. Those are so cool. Can you read what's written on the side? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Good oh. job. How are you feeling right now, Kyle? Whew, words can't even describe how I feel. I mean, just thank you so much, and I appreciate you, and I appreciate, you know, the directors and you guys just having me, and it's just a great experience, and I just want to thank you guys. There's some writing on the side. What does it say? Let's see. Work with Dwayne to get sneaker journals on the feet of kids no sh nationwide. <laughs> <laughs> so, when, Dwayne, when, what do you when have the great mind? people at The Real called me and, and told me about your story, instantly connected with you and one of the things I told them is I, anything I can do to help you I will. So what I would love to do is invite you down to my academy mm -hmm. and I would love to mentor you through the whole process of refining your design, working with my factory partners yes. so we can get this wow. as well as get, these, get the production. 
of Sneaker Journals out to all the kids nationwide. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, that is so awesome! That is so cool! Smile. Wow. How does it feel to see that your dream is finally going to come true? I mean, just from where I came from, from being in special ed to here right now with you guys, you know, it's a dream come true. This is something that I dreamed, dreamed ever since I was young. So, you know, thank you for you guys making my dream come true. Aww. That is so, and it's oh, so well done. Right. Your mom is in the audience. Yes, your mom is yes. in the audience. Mrs. Garrett White, where are you? Hi. <laughs> so tell us, how does it feel that your son's dream is about to come true? Yes. It's been a long journey, and I'm thankful. I love you. Love you too, Mom. Such a great kid. It really is. Wayne, obviously, we thank you so much for doing this. I mean, the sneaker looks incredible. Mm. And, you know, we thank you for being here today and for offering your time and obviously, you know, your expertise to help Kyle's dream come true. So thank you so much. You. And Kyle, I see big things for you. You are a phenomenal kid. You, I will not stop working until my company and everything oh. I've done for is at the top. Is at the top. I That's promise. right. You hear that? You, right. you hear that? We can't wait to watch that happen. And we are behind you.